Hi guys, I'm Jamie Oliver and I'm here at Kitchen Stories and I'm gonna give you my seven kitchen essentials that I could not live without. For me, kitchen essentials are all about things that make your everyday recipes work better and taste better. And these are things that I definitely couldn't live without. They're things that I always have in my kitchen every day, every week, every month, and I love. Lemons. A beautiful, unwaxed, gorgeous lemon. Um, every single week of the year, I buy lots of lemons. Um, I love citrus. And I use these in a lot of different ways. I use them for their juice. I use them for their skin, which is why I like to get the unwaxed ones. And I think they just bring a freshness to dishes. They lift things. I use it in nearly all of my cooking. You can use lemons in so many different ways and they're very, very good for you, full of vitamin C. Even if I'm making like a little pesto, I might put three drops, three little drops in and it just lifts. I might cook a piece of fish or a bit of chicken or grill or roast something and like a kiss of olive oil and a kiss of lemon and a pinch of salt and pepper, delicious. It takes, you know, boring vegetables and makes them exciting. So that is my first essential. I could talk about olive oil forever. I've picked olives, I've made olive oil, I've been out for 25 years to Italy to buy olive oil from this uh, vineyard um, and many others. Um, what you get is the most amazing, vivid green colour, luminous green colour, and it lasts about four months and then it starts to get lower and lower. Sometimes you can buy unfiltered olive oil, which almost feels thicker and more viscous, and that over mozzarella. <sighs> Amazing, it's like extraordinary. So like olive oil to me is like, it's, it's almost like a living kind of thing, it's changing. And um, that's why we put it in dark bottles so the sun can't destroy all the kind of life that is in the green olive oil. That most good kitchens would have a variation of oils. But extra virgin olive oil and olive oil um, without question is one of the healthiest oils on the planet. And you know, you really get what you pay for. This oil, Probably only three or four bottles comes from every tree. It's really grassy, it's peppery. It kind of tastes a little bit like the smell of cut grass. I use this in meat cooking, fish cooking, vegetarian cooking. Oil is treated a little bit like a commodity and therefore it gets disregarded and it goes cheap, 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 cheap. The thing about this is it's not a commodity, it's an ingredient. It's a key ingredient. Olive oil has this ability to bring all the flavors together in harmony, like a marriage. So really anything from 12 euros to 20 euros is what you would expect to pay for a good extra virgin olive oil. This is for finishing, this is for um, health and flavor, it's an ingredient. Um, and then the olive oil and the other oils are, are more kind of used for everyday things and higher cooking temperatures. Probably vinegar is the most underrated ingredient in the whole kitchen, no one talks about it. Vinegar is probably the best secret ingredient. It's used all around the world for many different reasons. You can make it out of wine, you can make it out of different varieties of wine, white wine, red wine, rosé, champagne, sherry, cider. All of these can turn into vinegar. They all taste totally different. It's brilliant in dressings. It's brilliant to make vegetables delicious. You can also use it as a marinade. If you rub that on any meat, or even fish to a degree, with a little olive oil and maybe some herbs, um, over one night, that gently starts to break down the, 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 the connective tissues of the meat and it will flavor it and uh, tenderize it. At home, I have about 50 bottles of vinegar. They're all different. And I, I know this is super geeky. Do you know when you go to like the pharmacy and you get a little, tss, tss, little spritzer for putting water on your face, right? I have like five of them with different vinegars in Sometimes I put chili in them, sometimes I put herbs. So when I'm turning over a pork chop and it's sizzling and it's golden, or if it's on a grill, or if I'm roasting meats and like the fat's getting crispy, 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 I just open the oven and go tss, 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 and you create the most amazing flavor. And actually at home I make vinegar. So you get like a mother, they call it a little mother. And if you look here, you can see like little bits. So if, if you can see that, that'll turn into a mother, which is like a little jellyfish. If you take wine and you put it into a container with some of that mother, in four weeks, it will go from wine to 
vinegar. If it was raspberry season or blackberry season, I could just pick 10 and go And then in three weeks, you've got blackberry vinegar. I'm telling you, imagine that in a stew in Bavaria with like beautiful, you know, mushrooms. Ah. So you can make vinegar out of anything. So there you go. Vinegar, but not as you know it. Honestly, I'm, I'm telling you one of the hidden secrets of the kitchen is vinegar. Molten sea salt's really interesting. It's where I come from, it's where I live. Um, and it's like where there's little estuaries and the sea meets rivers and like it's a lot of marshland. And on the marshland is like really interesting soil, really interesting um, vegetation. And when the rain comes down, it filters through that soil and goes into the estuary and then they collect the water and then the method they use to make this is they boil it until it makes little pyramids. It's like magic. It's like when bees make a hive, right? It's just like crazy magic. It's got a really incredible subtlety. It's obviously it's salt, so it works. It makes things tastier, but it has like a min minerality that is just gorgeous. I'll try and find you one of these little pyramids. Come on, I only want one. I don't, I'm not asking for much. Oh, here we go. So here's a small one. That's like a little pyramid of salt. Table salt is, it, it is it's kind of, I guess, got some more chemicals in it to make it sort of, you know, sprinkle correctly. It's more salty, it's more strong, and it has less diversity of flavor. You can cook the best food in the world, and if you don't season it, it's gonna be boring. So the process of seasoning is a really subjective but emotional. And you don't get it right first time. So when I'm looking at a dish and I'm seasoning it, I'll put like a little bit, mix it up, I'll have a taste. I think about how it tasted before, I think about how it tasted after, and then I think how much do I need to correct it? What was the difference between before and now? And if it's not perfect, how, then I do a little bit more. So we call that adjusting the seasoning. Season with care and good taste, and you will cook delicious food. Spices really as a whole, I love spices. To me, spices represent good health, and they represent hope. Yeah, hope. You can buy a piece of fish or a piece of meat, or you could get a beautiful butternut squash, and what spice you choose to put on it takes you on a holiday. You don't have to pay for a flight, you don't have to go there, you can just eat there. But really, the bigger conversation is the world of spices. It could be like a Chinese superstore or it could be like an Indian superstore. Like in most cities, you have a representation of your ethnic communities and go in them, ask them questions and there'll be spices that you've never seen before. I know quite a lot about spices, but there's always some that I don't know. And I'm like, excuse me, dude, like, what do you do with that? And they go, oh, you've got to have that with this and you've got to have it with that or we cook it like that. Spices are the most nutrient dense food by weight on the planet. These currently are my favorite. So this is fennel seeds. Dried fennel is subtle, it's slightly aniseed, and I use a lot of this. It's great with fish, it's great with meat, it's great with vegetables, it's great in curries, it's great in stews. You know, you can just put some fennel seeds in a little pan and with some olive oil and just bring it up to a little gentle sizzle and then you cook greens in it um, with a little kiss of lemon juice and salt and it's delicious. Um, fennel is like really good friends with pork. Sometimes, often I just use them whole like that and they're nice to eat and if you stew them they're soft and if you fry them they're crispy. Um, or you can pound them in a pestle and mortar and turn it into like a flour and you can like dust things in them so you can like take a chicken breast and dust it in salt, pepper and fennel that you whiz up and it's delicious. My next essential is the original kitchen gadget, two bits of rock. The pestle and mortar, anyone that takes food seriously has one. If you haven't got one, then you haven't lived. Yeah, you've got like mixers and blenders and toasters and every gadget under the sun that is Uno, thousands and thousands of years of, you know, cracking, bruising, smashing, you know, extracting nutrients, extracting flavor, ex extracting essential oils. If you think you love food and you haven't got one, get one. I use this every day for pretty much every meal. Look, even if you cook the simplest food in the world, just by smashing up four or five 
leaves of mint or basil or parsley or any herb. It could be a fresh herb or a woody herb and a little olive oil. Don't get the pottery ones. Get the granite ones, I think. They're the best. The pottery ones break like the metal ones, like I don't like. The wooden ones are okay. They, the soft contact is useful for certain things, but that's quite technical. Stick to the granite and you'll be happy. It will last forever. You don't have to plug it in and it will never break unless you drop it on your foot and it will break your foot. And then last but not least, the humble chili. So these are amazing. Most of my cooking is not hot, 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 or even like spicy. Like, I do like spice, but I like what this can give you very gently, very subtly. I try and remove the seeds and um, control the heat. I actually don't want the heat, I want the fruit. Um, there's so much you can do to this, to lift the dish. I freeze them sometimes, often, and when they're frozen, of course, they go hard, and I grate them very finely over salads and grilled meats and fish, amazing. Like, you can pickle it, like a little quick pickle in vinegar with salt, amazing. Like, that same stew that you've always cooked, try it with a little chilli pickle and with fresh herbs in it. Bing! Whoa. Scotch bonnets is probably my favourite, that's quite hot. If you cook them whole, you have a gentle heat, gentle, gentle, then you can take it out and you can cut it up and put a bit more in and you can kind of like, you know. Chili, chilies are my life. Chilies are my everything. I'm talking about them and I'm sweating on my nose. So that's my seven kitchen essentials. What's your favorite ones? Let me know in the comments box below. And this is my new cookbook one. This is One Pan Wonders and it's all about easy, delicious food that's cooked in one pan. Minimal washing up. So there you go, lovely people. Until next time, take care, lots of love.